Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video from Inside the Eve Echo's final test. Today I wanted to have a look at the Sanchez Nation faction frigate, the Succubus, as this is one of the most terrifying PvP frigates that you can get your hands on in EVE Online, and I wanted to see how it held up in the final test, thus as we prepare for launch. As you guys know, I'm all about my frigate-based PvP, so this is one of those that I really just wanted to give a quick test run to. Now, before we jump in on this video, if you do enjoy it, let me know at the end by hitting like on it. Subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Now, if you've got a particular video you'd like to see me make, a topic you'd like me to cover, a question you'd like answered, a, f a ship that you'd like to see how I fit and what I think about it, let me know in the comment section below or on the social media channels shown at the bottom of your screen now. Come join us on the Catskull Cartel Discord as well. There are plenty of public channels there full of super friendly people who are willing to help in any way, shape or form they can or just chat about Eve Echoes. Now, of course, talking about help, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me on Patreon. Every dollar pledged really does help keep this channel going. It means so much to me that when someone does pledge. Like, seriously, thank you all so, so much for believing in me, believing in my content enough to donate your hard-earned money. Really means a lot. Words cannot describe. That all said and done, though, let's have a look at the Succubus. Now the Succubus, as I said, is a Sanchez Nation faction frigate. Sanchez Nation are based down in the Stain area of a Mars space. That's where you'll need to go and find those ever elusive dead space anomalies if you are looking for Sanchez Nation. Now, if we look at the abilities for the Succubus, you'll see that like most of the other faction frigates, we've got three high slots, three mid slots, three low slots, and three of each of the rigs. The roll bonus is a very confusing plus one max shield field module, which if you've watched my video on what are guardian ships, you'll understand what a shield field module is, but basically it allows you to put a shield around everything nearby. As for why you would put one of these on a, on a succubus, it seems a bit of a weird choice for me, but I guess it could work if you want to have something that's up close and personal, whizzing around at close range, and then you want to bring in other things as well. It means that you can neutralize one target whilst no one else is able to shoot at you, but considering that the, the succubus wants to get up close and personal, most of the things you're going to be targeting are going to be inside that shield. It's a bit of a confusing role bonus for me. I'm not sure what to make of that. So ultimately, when we come to the fitting and later on, you'll see that I've actually ignored that. Now, if we look then at the other skill bonuses, you've got advanced small laser operation, gives you 20% small beam laser damage for each point you have in it, and 7.5% increase in small beam laser tracking speed. Obviously, that's just more damage per uh, small beam laser and the ability to actually hit your target a little bit better, which is really useful considering how speedy the succubus actually is. Obviously, at a full five trained points there, you're looking at 100% uh, additional small beam laser damage and ooh, what 7.5 times five that much small beam laser tracking speed. I should really have that memorized by now what five of that is because it keeps cropping up. Now, Advanced Frigate Command Bonus will also give you plus 20% Afterburner Velocity Bonus up to a maximum of 100%, and a 5% Shield Bonus up to a maximum of 25%. That means the shield suddenly becomes a lot better on this ship, um, you become a lot tankier with it, and that Afterburner Velocity Bonus is the key point of why the Succubus is so terrifying in fi uh, Frigate-based PvP. Now, a frigate like this is normally fighting in warp scrambler range, which means you are locked down in place. You cannot activate your warp drives. You're not going to be able to get out of that combat easily. That also includes your micro warp drives. Now, what this means is that the afterburner, if you equip an afterburner to this ship, it is on par with, if not better, than a micro warp drive. And when you're in warp scrambler range, you can still activate an afterburner. That means you're incredibly difficult to hit, even if they've locked you down. You're whizzing around like you've got a micro warp drive active, but you, you can do so inside the warp disruptor range. That's huge. That's huge because it makes you really darn difficult to hit. And looking at the rest of the stats here, you can see a standard flight velocity of 414 meters per second. Ultimately, with a 5 AU warp speed, this is one nippy little ship. Now, the power grid and the capacitor are both fairly small, um, especially considering this is a laser-based vessel, um, but they're not terrible. They're not terrible, though, for the build that I've gone for that I'm going to show you in a moment, you will see that if I go across to the rigs, I have had to put on a, an ancillary power grid router as I needed just a little bit of extra power grid. And we'll talk about the rigs later on, but you'll see that I've just had to boost that there. 
Now, because of the skill bonuses to laser turrets, the small beam lasers, of course I've gone for the Imperial Navy small beam laser. That is the best one I could get into these slots. I had three of these kicking around. Decent optimal range of 12.1 kilometers, a decent enough accuracy fall off. Obviously, Amar lasers tend to have a very high optimal range, and then the accuracy fall off is very quick and very sudden. Here, tracking speed of 212 as well means you can keep firing at anything that you're up close and personal to whilst you're whizzing around it. Now, in the mid slots, because I'm going to be whizzing around things, I want to be able to hit it. I want to make sure that the transverse velocity is good on my end and not so good on theirs. They're not moving as fast in comparison to me. I'm going to do that with a Mark 7 Stasis Weber Fire that is going to drop their movement speed, their flight velocity down by 53%. They're going to be moving at half the speed they normally would. I'm very happy with that. Second thing along is a Mark V small energy Nosferatu. I'm using this to make up for the fact that this ship does not have a huge capacitor. This means that when I'm up close, I can be draining their capacitor and putting it in and feeding mine with it, which is always incredibly useful on a ship like this. And the third and final slot is, of course, the Mark VII Warp Disruptor. Yes, as I said, a faction frigate is going to be fighting in Warp Scrambler range, so 100% I want to have a Warp Scrambler of my own. It sucks that if they're going to scramble me, damn straight I'm going to scramble them right back. Now, for the low slots as well, a Mark VII Heatsink just gives me a little bit of extra punch to have um, with my laser turrets. The Mark V Medium Shield Extender, um, ultimately, the reason I've gone for this is because, obviously, as a shield-tanked vessel, I want to have as much health as possible, and I can fit a Mark V medium onto this ship. That is a massive, massive amount there for me to get that onto there. I can really boost my uh, my shields up. You can see here, 1744 shield increase. That's pretty huge. And of course, the final slot is an afterburner because of those whopping great big afterburner burners. This is for 100% extra afterburner effect. Here you can see 314% flight velocity adjustment. I think that actually works out then at what 628% I actually get when that's activated. And looking at this, like at the flat stats on this ship, you can see it's a little bit weaker than my Dramiel at 185, uh, 87 DPS. The defense mainly shield there is 78883. Um, with 4326 on the shield and 1312 uh, on armor. Um, your armor on this is pathetic and structures, in fairness, not much worse. Um, but the shield is where the big thing comes in. Look, obviously, with that shield extender as well, I can boost that right out the wazoo. It is capacitor stable and a flat navigation speed there of 55, uh, 558.9. Now, when I actually pull this out into space, you'll see that that does go right up once I've got everything active. Now, if we then go back into looking at the rigs, all I've done for these is what you would expect. I've gone for accuracy fall off adjustment on the lasers, um, mainly because I just didn't have three of the other rigs handy. Power grid requirement adjustment was just a nice thing, again, to help me fit a few more of those in there. And a damage uh, laser collision laser collision accelerator. Woohoo, that's tough to say. Laser collision accelerator for an additional 12.5% damage. Obviously, if you can get higher power rigs on this, the better. I would have loved to have get some Mark III's on there, but they are stupidly expensive. In the low slots as well, I've gone for a hyperspatial velocity optimizer, just because I had a couple of these lying around, and that additional warp speed increase is always nice. Um, and a dynamic fuel valve, just to reduce the amount of capacitor required to activate my afterburner. Simply put, I'm going to be using an afterburner. Let's make it so that it doesn't use as much of my uh, capacitor, you know? Anyway, so that said and done, the scales obviously that you're going to use on this, apart from the ones that are of course related to the ship itself, which are of course the Advanced Frigate Command. Advanced Frigate Command flat out normally just gives you inertia modifiers um, and frigate velocity so you move faster and you turn quicker, that kind of thing. And of course under weapons, the main one you're going to want to go for is the Advanced Small Laser Operation. Straight up and down, the uh, small laser operation gives you additional laser damage, tracking speed, and it reduces the heatsink activation time. You'll see the basic version doesn't have the heatsink activation time, but does have the additional damage and the tracking speed. Upgrade is always worth, worth having as well. If you're going to be using small lasers, you may as well increase the damage that little bit more. You increase the accuracy fall off and the optimal range there just by having those. U ultimately, you would probably want to take this up to advanced as well. That is just going to give you flat DPS increase to your succubus. Now, of course, beyond those, fr uh, Frigate Engineering just helps you deal with the power grid and the capacitor. Obviously, very, very useful, especially on an energy turret ship. If we go into shield operation, that's one of the things you're going to want there, just to help you use those shields a bit better, or shield extenders, that kind of thing. 
frigate defense upgrade and of course here I've got advanced frigate defense upgrade just to give you those additional bonuses to shield armor and structure always very nice to have and finally of course though navigation you're going to want to have some skills into afterburner just to really max out how speedy this little thing can be so first things first, let's have a look. Let's just check that it is safe for me to undock. We did get absolutely hammered by a Chinese group of marauding invaders earlier. And um, they had like three Macariels, um, a couple of the Can Yu airships. They just came in and pounded us from a ridiculous uh, distance and hit and run attacks to the point that we ultimately just ended up docking back in the station and waiting them out. Anyway, so here we are out in space now. If I pop on all of these different things and we'll have a look at its stats there, so I pop on all of those, then open up the fitting. You'll see already that the shield has shot right up to 7,000, uh, 7,883. The defense has added another whack up to 228, thanks to that heatsink. And the navigation speed has gone to a mighty 2,176. This thing is ludicrously nippy. Like, the speed that this thing operates at now is just terrifying, although that did kill about 62%, well, killed off 30, 40% of my, uh, of my capacitor to do so. So Alex the Master, who longtime viewers of this channel will remember as the guy who built me the worm back in the OBT only to get his Omen Navy issue then blown to smithereens by it, has very kindly agreed to assist with a demonstration in here. So what he's done is he's grabbed a Can You class battlecruiser and has jumped out to a nearby planet which I'm going to warp to and blow up. I did think a lot of you guys might enjoy just seeing a Can You class battlecruiser getting destroyed as I know a lot of you are pretty infuriated with how ridiculous powerful that ship can be. So here we go, I'm going to warp in now to N7BIY1 at a range of about 30 kilometers away so that we can see whether or not there he is. There's Alex, we're going to lock onto his target as soon as we get into range. Okay, he's warped in at a distance as well. Awesome. Time for me to get into position, orbit, put on that afterburner and see how close we can get to him and how quickly then we can strip through all of his fittings. So let's get the warps and everything else equipped onto there, hitting him hard, everything's locked in position. Now, ultimately, I know the Can U itself can't actually, uh, it's got a decent warp stability of like a plus six, so we're not going to be able to destroy it. There it is there. You can see it is webbed down. It's got the, uh, the warp disruptor on it as well. So theoretically, if this only had a warp stability of zero, yeah. <laughs> if it only had a warp stability of zero, he wouldn't be warping away at this point. Ultimately, a Can U class battlecruiser does have that additional warp stability bonus, so it can stay here for a while. Let's up the damage. Now, ultimately, if Alex is going to open fire at me, he's not going to be able to hit me at this point in time. I am too close and moving too fast around him. You can see I'm hitting almost 2,000 meters per second in a direct orbit at six kilometers away. <laughs> His acting on screen now, I know, is absolutely atrocious, but there we go. Ultimately, the point of this all now here is, yes, if he were any other ship, he is now uh, in position because he uh, he's going to be held in that position by the warp disruptor. The stasis webifier is then going to stop him from actually moving around particularly fast and just keeps him in position for my turrets to lock onto as well. The uh, the energy sorry the energy Nosferatu is draining his capacitor and bringing it into mine, which actually, in fairness, is a very it's a very useful thing to do against a Can You class battlecruiser simply because it actually has surprisingly low capacitor. So ultimately, yeah, it's not the fun. Obviously, a Can You has a lot of effective HP. It's going to take a long time for me to pull down, but you can see I am getting the damage there. And if this were an actual situation where this cruiser were opening fire on me, it's not going to be able to hit me at this close range. So as I've mentioned in other videos, it's kind of that, you know, death by a thousand cuts. He can't get away, he can't hit me, I'm just left here to rip him apart with impunity. And so here we come now down through the final little few hits of the armor. Let's put the, uh, the heat sink back on do the final hits of the armor and we're going to start dealing some damage to the hull. Now I have zoomed in here because again I know a lot of you are really annoyed by the Can You. It's one of those ships we all want to see get blown up a couple of times. I love this ship. I do think it's a beautiful ship. I think it's got some fantastic stats but I do think it needs to be nerfed just a little bit for live. I mean heck I've managed to get this up to a 215 kilometer range on its turrets um, which I might do another video on. 
But ultimately, yeah, I'm now going to pull through that. I just want to see this thing blown apart. We've had so many of these causes problems. That Chinese fleet earlier, my goodness. They just pounded us. They came in at about 100 kilometers range, would hit us with a couple of salvos, and then disappear there. Can you not kill my pod? Goodness gracious me, can we stop with the can you jokes already? It's like, it, it's getting old at this point. Let's zoom out. You should be able to see my succubus doing the orbit around. There it is. Whee! <laughs> Super speedy little ship. Just cannot take any damage whatsoever. Um, we're slowly getting through that hole. Again, sitting at six kilometers, just whizzing around. Come on! Come on, little can you! <laughs> I've been waiting to see one of these pop for a long time. No, Alex, that pun will get old. The pun already is old, and I've used it on a thumbnail for crying out loud. <laughs> Let's get that heat sink on one more time. Yeah, okay, so it does take a little bit of time, as I said, to get through a can you. But for a sucker bus itself, I mean, we're looking at a damage there. As I said, what, it's only around about the 200 mark, 230 DPS. He's held in place, or would be if he didn't have the stability of the, the can you has. Any other battle cruiser it would work with. Um, and here it is, any moment now, one, maybe two more salvos, maybe three salvos. Here it comes, here comes that explosion. We've all been waiting for to see a Can You Battlecruiser go boom. And there it goes. Kablooey. <laughs> oh, that's satisfying. All right, well, let's get the camera back onto me in the Succubus. I love this little ship. It's so ridiculously speedy and fast. Huge thank you to Jade Zion for lending me this thing. Off goes Alex. Thank you ever so much for letting me blow up your Can You. I know he's going to go and uh, like pick that back up again. Um, using the insurance, and I know he took his turrets off for that exact purpose. So thank you, Alex, for letting me do that. Thank you, Jade, for lending me this ship. I hope this has inspired you guys to give a succubus a chance. Again, I couldn't really showcase the the, the whole um, the, the, the can you dealing, uh, doing the shots and missing just because I didn't want to risk it with uh, someone else's ship. But I'm sure once we get into live, I'll be flying a succubus and I will showcase that actually properly um, in, in, use, in use. I will be doing a lot of videos, I imagine, in live going through and just showcasing uh, frigate-based PvP because it's what I enjoy doing. I did a couple of them during the OBT. Some people seem to really enjoy those, so I imagine I'll be doing a few more of those. I'll just record while playing um, and blow some cool stuff up. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully that's inspired you to try out a succubus. It's one of my favorite faction frigates. There's Alex taking photos and sending them to me. Should put myself on Do Not Disturb while doing all this, really. But anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.